Hello world, I'm Brancliff. As I've mentioned a few times for the past few months, I'm very behind on my YouTubing. But before we start voting on the game popularity contest, I just wanted to let you guys know that there's this Honkai Star Rail food crossover event, but like, unlike a lot of the previous ones that Hoyo has done, it's not associated with one individual, like, company. Uh, the company that it's based on depends on what country you live in, so like it might be uh, Wendy's for you, but it might be Domino's. Um, but anyways, the food collab thing, right? I just found out that there's actually a spot for it in Seattle, which means by the time I am uploading this video, by the time this video is public, I might actually be physically at that location trying out the food and I think it's gonna be really exciting so uh, maybe look forward to a video on that later on cool but right anyways it's time for the game popularity contest okay so like jokes aside though 2023 has been amazing for video games uh, you probably won't hear me talk about it because like the kinds of games that I make videos on are almost always going to be like online games and live service games, but not like the mainstream ones so well, I mean, I mean, Hoyo's kind of on top of the world right now, maybe I, mm, mm, okay, well, like, I mean, you wouldn't see me playing Fortnite or Final Fantasy XIV, you know what I mean? Uh, not that those games are bad, it's just I've carved out a specific type of thing I make a video about, so the games this year have been very good, but like, let's be real here, we all know that Baldur's Gate 3 is going to sweep the entire show. So, like, really, the thing with the Game Awards this year is, it's that scramble for silver. You gotta see who gets that second place, if they even mention that, I don't even remember. Um, so, like, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll go vote, but, like, we already know how this is going to turn out, right? So, uh, yeah, let's get started. I try to do this sort of video every year. I'm gonna see if I... I gotta see if I got, can dig up the times I've done this for, like, the previous years, and maybe I'll put them in the video description. So, uh, view all categories? Oh, this just lets you view the categories and then jump to them. Okay, we're gonna take this one at a time, and I guess we're starting with the, uh, the most important one up front, and hold on, there is some real bad screen crunch in the way I'm recording this right now. Yeah, there we go. So, Game of the Year nominations. There is Alan Week 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Now, two very notable omissions here, which is not something I can normally say, but again, it's been great for games this year. Um, notice how both Starfield and Hogwarts Legacy didn't make the cut. Now, I've always been a Nintendo kid, but let's be real here, Mario Wonder should not be here. If it were my decision, I would have swapped that out for Hogwarts Legacy. Mario Wonder is amazing. It is, like, the new peak of 2D Mario. And it's, like, making up for how devoid of personality and ideas 2D Mario has been lacking in for the last, like, decade. But are people really going to look at that and think, Oh yeah, this is the best that the video game industry has to offer. This is mwah, fine art. I don't think they're going to say that about the new Mario game. Uh, if it were 3D, they might, though, because, like, people love them 3D Mario. Um, but anyways, right, like, okay, as mentioned, we all know Baldur's Gate 3 is going to sweep this. Or is it? Because I think the new Zelda game could also be a strong contender here, but because it was released months ago, like, it's not going to be as much in people's minds right now. Meanwhile, Baldur's Gate 3, it's not only newer, but it's still consistently been getting updates. So it's got that um, uh, recency bias, is that the term for this? Uh, but anyways, um, I don't know. Like, And then Alan Wake 2, like, I don't know if my sister is watching this. Uh, if she is, I gotta say, like, okay, Alan Wake 2 is very good, but how much of its presence here do you think is specifically because it took so long to get here? Like, if Alan Wake 1 was released three years ago, do you think people would be freaking out about it as much? I don't know. Um, I mean, I'll vote for Zelda just to try to get that, that upset. Let's see if we can get that, like, 
um, underdog story, which is not something I think people would ever say about a Zelda game. But again, Baldur's Gate sweep, it's gonna happen. Alright, let's keep going. Best Game Direction. Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Mario Wonder, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I think that this is a really redundant award, especially considering that the games that are here are basically the same, except they took out one. Um, in terms of, like, so it says, awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. And, like, in terms of, like, game design and creativity, I would I would actually give Mario Wonder this. It is a very creative game. It's throwing new ideas at you almost every level. And it's showing that the old dog can learn the new tricks. Although, on the other hand, I mean, Zelda, like, it, it lets players express that kind of creativity. But I don't know so much if I would say that the developers are as creative, because, like, the draw of the Zelda game is, like, giving you all these things and seeing what you accomplish with them, right? But then at the same time, it's like, well, in terms of creativity on the developer's part, like, it's kind of the same game world, and that might seem a little, like, uninspired. But I, I think that the new Zelda game is bigger than the sum of its parts. Like, yeah, they do reuse things, but, like, it, it's more than just that, you know? But anyways, I, I'll give this one to Mario, but... Again, pretty sure Baldur's Gate has got this one. And then there's best narrative. So this is like the writing, basically the story. So then there's Alan Wake, Baldur's Gate, Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy 16, and Marvel Spider-Man 2. Now I gotta say up front, I, Cyberpunk is kind of on my shit list. Cause like, so when No Man's Sky had its redemption arc, when everybody hated it because they had all the lies during the game's uh, publicity run, and then none of them came true, and then they bunkered down, and then they made the game as good as what they said they were going to do, and they gave it out for free. I mean, well, I, I mean in the sense that they didn't, like, you know, make you pay for an expansion or whatever, right? But see, like, with No Man's Sky, they were an indie company, with that had barely made any games before this so like i think that their redemption arc is really scrappy and cool and stuff with cyberpunk it's a big faceless company so like they could they definitely could have held the game back until it was actually ready and then they just chose not to now yes i know it's a little more complicated than that there's shareholders to sim for and like it had already been delayed a ton of times at that point anyway but like man i don't know um but anyways in terms of story yeah i think i have to give this one to Baldur's gate 3 uh like I mean, obviously with Alan Wake 2, like, that Remedy cinematic universe, everybody loves that stuff, right? But Baldur's Gate, like, the sheer ambition of trying to translate a tabletop game to, like, the AAA space. I mean, like, a lot of the draw of Dungeons & Dragons is that anything can happen because it's just a bunch of people sitting at a table making things up. Like, the entirety of Dungeons & Dragons is just a figment of your imagination. So, like grasping that and then making a game that feels like it is as expansive as ambitious the possibilities are as endless even though that doesn't really make any sense uh yeah i gotta give this to Baldur's gate and then there's best art direction for outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation so there's alan wake 2 hi-fi rush lies of p Mario Wonder, and the new Zelda game. Now, like, okay, real talk, right? Like, who's saying that the Zelda game is the leader in art direction? I mean, like, it looks good and everything, but, like, really? Man, I, I don't know. Cause, like, okay, I already feel like I want to rule out Lies of P and Alan Wake just because I think that, like, when game developers, especially when it's on a PlayStation, when all they're doing is just making the game realisticer and then realisticer, I don't think that's very interesting, and it doesn't tend to age as well. Because with these sorts of games, like, whenever you're looking back at them in retrospect, it's always going to be like, oh, well, you know, it looks really good for the time. Yeah, I'm sure people thought GoldenEye 64 looked good for the time. I always think that having an inspired art style 
is better than gritty artistic quality. There's there's a word for this, and I don't. It's on the tip of my tongue, and I don't remember what it is. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll say the new Mario game. I mean, I don't really have a lot of like opinion on this in general, but. Eh. And then there's best score and music. Okay, Alan Wake 2, again, Baldur's Gate 3, again, Final Fantasy 16, Hi-Fi Rush, and the Zelda game. I honestly just don't know. Um, like, I'm sure they all have great soundtracks, but I haven't downloaded the music for any of these games. Um, but I gotta say, right, like, I, I kind of don't want to vote because I don't know, but also at the top right, it does track how many times you voted. And, like, seeing that 4 out of 31 fraction is like, well, I got a 100% the game awards. Uh, so, I don't know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say hi, Fire Rush. <laughs> Where's the Mario RPG remake? Yeah, get my girl Yoko Shimamura some credit. She, she used to not even get credited when she got started in the industry. Okay, so then there's best audio design, which is different from jamming out to good music. Um, and this one I really don't care about. I, like... It's not like whether or not the music is good or not. It's like the sound design, which is like, um, do you hear footsteps when you walk on things? Um, is there 3D audio of like if you hear someone talking from like far away? I don't care. Uh, dead space, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> and then there's best performance. Uh, so then there's Ben Star who was in Final Fantasy 16 would would really appreciate if you told me who he was in Final Fantasy 16 Cameron Monaghan I don't know who these people are Cameron Monaghan Star Wars Jedi Survivor Idris Elba Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Livery and I think more importantly uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie but that wasn't this year was it uh, Melody Liebird from Alan Wake 2, Neil Newbin from Baldur's Gate 3, or Yuri Lowenthal from Marvel Spider-Man 2. I mean, this man's the GOAT. He's voiced, like, all of your favorite main characters. Um, I, I almost feel like I should vote for him just because he's a name I recognize. Like, I'm gonna be honest, guys, I don't really care about, like, actors and celebrities and that kind of stuff, and I'm not even really a big, like, voice actor person. I think that stuff is, like, really fun trivia, I guess, but then that's about it. Although I will say, I recently found out that, um, uh, Hu Tao's Japanese voice actor, Rie Takahashi, is a Shona enjoyer, which is like, hmm, didn't know that. Anyways, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll vote for main character, man, I guess. And then there's innovation in accessibility, recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing to the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. I find the conversation about accessibility to be really obnoxious because a lot of the time what it boils down to is like uh, people wanting like a uh, dumb infant easy mode for either game journalists who can't be bothered to actually become acquainted with the thing that their job is encompassing, or people who just want to be carried to the end without actually having to, like, work for it. Uh, I think that, like, accessibility in terms of, like, letting disabled gamers play games, that's pretty cool, but, like, when you see journos complaining that the new Souls game uh, doesn't have a pansy wuss mode, uh, I really don't think that they're thinking about disabled people when they say things like that. Um, I don't really know a lot about what the games here have done for this sort of thing, but I do know that Street Fighter VI has um, actually done a little bit for this and having a wide variety of control options and some of the control options are meant to be used at like different parts of your skill level in becoming good at the game. And I think that's really interesting. Uh, so I'm gonna vote for that. Um, it is a fighting game after all, so like that sort that sense of like personal growth is really important to it. And then there's games for impact which I can tell you right now, I don't give a shit. So there's A Space for the Unbound, Chance of the Senar, uh, Snoot Game, Tachia, Terranil, and Venba. I, I can say right now, like, I've always hated this award because this is for the games that are, like, whiny social commentaries first and then actual video games that are meant to be played second. Um, I don't know, I'll, I'll vote for... Terra Nil, I guess. Um, 
It's, uh, the picture that they used for this is the least Tumblr. Ah, oh, jeez, there's Netflix behind this. Greg, <laughs> can I take my vote back? <sighs> okay, what's next? And then there's best ongoing game. So, you know, your live service game. So there's Apex Legends, Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy 16, Fortnite, and Gensh. So, I, I mean, I've already said my piece about Cyberpunk, so it's definitely not going to be that one. Now, Final Fantasy 16, that one is, like not one of the MMORPGs, so I don't even know why it's made the cut. I mean, like, are they patching it still? Because if so, then, like, I don't know, uh, increasing the damage of Fyraka is, uh, something. But, like, when I think about ongoing games, I'm going to think about how much work uh, the company behind the game is putting in for the ongoing experience. And, I mean, obviously that's going to be Gensh. Although, shoutouts to Fortnite, because they're doing this thing where, like, so, you know, they, they change the map every now and again, and just recently, they made the original map the current map. So, like, the OG map, I guess. And, like, that's a really cool throwback, but then I also think, like, that's not really great for, like, production value and effort, but it is really fun. Uh, again, I am not a Fortnite player, so I'm just kind of going off of what I've heard here. And then there's best community support. So then there's Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 6... Oh, no, that's... Wait, hold up. Did I just call Final Fantasy f uh, 14 Final Fantasy 16? <laughs> Oops. My bad. I'm sorry. Future me has probably already pointed it out. Um, but anyways, so I can tell you right now that Destiny 2 is not going to be the winner here because people are very angry at the Destiny 2 developers right now because they just laid off a bunch of people including the absolute legend who was making its music and people love the Destiny 2 soundtrack. Um, so they're they're kind of on people's shit list right now. Um, in terms of community support, like, I mean everybody knows the Final Fantasy 14 community is ever expanding and great, but like, I don't know specifically what the community right now is doing in particular. Uh, but with Baldur's Gate, and maybe this is because it's newer now, so it's easier to it do new things, but I feel like there's this sort of, like, sense of scientific exploration where because, like, D&D &D is so, like, expansive, people are trying out new sorts of combinations and finding new ways to get around situations all the time, and, like, people are shockingly creative with that sort of thing. So I'm gonna give them that. But, I mean, again, Baldur's Gate 3 is going to sweep everything anyway, so... And then there's Best Independent Game. Now, there's been a bit of uh, drama surrounding this, because uh, they cannot officially define what is and isn't an independent game. Because Dave the Diver here, um, I mean, Nexon is involved in this, and uh, Nexon is a name you may be familiar with. Uh, they've worked on some things like, oh, I don't know, uh, Maple Story. Uh, Elsword. <laughs> so, anyways, there's Cocoon, Dave the Diver, Dredge, Sea of Stars, and Viewfinder. I feel like all of the drama surrounding whether or not Dave the Diver counts is just big publicity to get you to vote for Dave the Diver, so it's probably going to win anyway, so I'm gonna vote for it here, but also, like, people say that game is really good. Um, I haven't played it myself, but I've only heard good things talk about it. And then there's Best Debut Indie Game, so it's like the last one, but it has to be their first game, I guess. So there's Cocoon, Dredge, Pizza Tower, Venba, and Fighter, and like, we all know Pizza Tower has got this one, right? Everybody loves Pizza Tower. Is the company behind them really called Tour de Pizza? <laughs> Like, like it's not racist enough that they named the playable character Peppino Spaghetti. <laughs> okay, alright, we'll vote for it. Lilia, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Best phone game. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, Honkai Star Rail, Monster Hunter Now, and Terra Nail. Uh, okay, so now this time Honkai's in, but Genji isn't in. Um... I mean, okay, we all know Honkai Star Rail was going to win this one, and, like, I know I should vote it for it here, but I kind of don't want to, because, like, okay, I, I, okay, okay, please don't hate me for what I'm about to say, because, like, I promise I can explain this later in a separate video. I really don't like the Honkai Star Rail 
community. I'm sorry, I know it sounds really mean. I promise I have an explanation for it. I mean, we know it's gonna sweep anyway, but just out of spite, I'm gonna vote for Hello Kitty Island Adventure. I genuinely didn't even know that this was a game that actually existed. I heard about it in South Park and I thought it was a joke. And that was like, what, 15 years ago? So like, it's come back, I guess? And you know, Hello Kitty isn't even Sanrio's most popular character. Like, everybody knows it's about cinema role these days. <laughs> Uh, Kabira, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. And then there's best VR slash AR. Now, I feel like it's kind of dumb to group these two things together, since virtual reality is so much more ambitious than augmented uh, reality. Virtual reality is, you know, you put on the headset, you've got, like, you can move around, you can move your camera uh, by moving your head in real life, you can swing your arms around. AR is, um, like, you point your camera at something and it puts a 3D model, uh, on the screen. Like, do you guys remember Face Raiders for the 3DS? Uh, yeah, it's... Right, anyway, so there's Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Call of the Mountain. Genuinely did not know that there was a new Horizon game. I know that the Horizon games are well known for being very unfortunately timed, but like, I mean, I think that's like a publicity thing. I've never even heard of this game. And then there's Humanity, Resident Evil Village VR Mode, and Syn Synapse. Um, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll give Horizon the pity vote, because we all know that one's not going anywhere. Then there's Best Action Game. So there's Armored Core 6, Dead Island 2, Ghost Runner 2, Hi-Fi Rush, and Remnant 2. Uh, I didn't play any of these, but like, I hear everybody loves Armored Core 6, so I don't know, I'll vote for that, I guess. I feel kind of bad voting for things I don't actually know anything about, but look, the number, guys! I need to make the number go up. Okay, so then there's Best Action Adventure, so there's Alan Wake 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and Zelda. I shouldn't I shouldn't rag on Alan Wake 2. I, I really don't like horror games in general because I feel like there's this really big separation of the horror element and then the game element. A lot of them amount to just being like walking simulators. I know that Alan Wake 2 is not like that. Alan Wake actually has like resource management and combat and like difficulty. Um, but um, I mean, like it says best action adventure game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. And like, I mean, Zelda's got that in the spades. So I'm going to vote for that there. Although everybody loves that Resident Evil 4 remake. Best RPG. Oh, there's Starfield. So there's Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy 16, Wise of Peace, Sea of Stars, and Starfield. We all know Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win this. Um, but I gotta say, right, like, I mean, obviously it was going to win this, but I feel like its competition is really not doing it any favors, or really not, like, putting up the best fight here either. I mean, these games are good, but, like, Final Fantasy 16 did not feel as big of a deal as it probably should have been. Like, it's fine, but, like, don't you think a new Final Fantasy game should feel like, like, like this big old cultural event? But it, it just kind of wasn't. Uh, Lies of P, um, I mean, like, the people who like it do like it, but, um, in the Souls game space, it does still have to compete with Elden Ring, and there- I, I know Elden Ring is kind of old news now, but like, I mean, everybody really likes it, and they are still working on the DLC. Uh, Sea of Stars, I mean, it's good, but like, people are naturally going to be looking for that sense of like, scale, and budget, and like, ambition, and Sea of Stars is like, still pretty indie, so, like, um, I- <sighs> I mean, it's a good game, but like, I mean, people are going to be much more wowed by Baldur's Gate. And then Starfield, oh my god, Starfield was, oh jeez, like, you, a new Bethesda game absolutely needs to be a cultural phenomenon, like, even more than a new Final Fantasy game. When a new Fallout game comes out, it's a big deal. When a new Elder Scrolls game comes out, it's a big deal. Starfield was fine, I guess? kind of okay, maybe a little disappointing in some respects, uh, people really wanted more from it. So, I mean, we all know it's gonna be Baldur's Gate 3, so I'm just, just gonna give it my vote and move on. Best fighting game. So there's God of Rock, 
uh, Mortal Kombat 1, which... God, I really wish they didn't call it that. That's going to be confusing. Uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, Pocket Bravery, and Street Fighter 6. Now, I'm going to be honest, the only ones here I've even heard of are Street Fighter 6, Nick, and Mortal Kombat. Now, uh, Nick, the, the new Nick fighting game, it's, it is actually really good. It's just, it's sort of got this weird baggage to put up with because the first game was like a little low budget, honestly. Like, the physics weren't the problem, and, like, the roster was there and everything. It just it just really needed more budget. And the second one is like, okay, guys, we're doing it for real now, let's go. Uh, but then again, at the same time, like, I mean, Street Fighter was like that. Like, how many people do you know actually played Street Fighter 1? Street Fighter 2 was the one that mattered. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Street Fighter 6, but I'll vote for Nick just for that underdog vote. So, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, best family game. So there's Disney Illusion Island, Party Animals, Pikmin 4, Sonic Superstars, and the new Mario game. Um, man, we're starting to get, to get into those really stinky awards that nobody cares about. Disney Illusion Island came and went. I did not actually hear a single person talk about it. Party Animals is just, um... God, what's that game called? Hold on, let me look it up again. Okay, you, you know Gang Beasts? Party Animals is literally just Gang Beasts. Uh, so, eh. Pikmin 4. Uh, Pikmin 4 is very good, but like, family game? I don't know about that. Um, Sonic Superstars? It's fine. Yeah, I'll give this to the new Mario game. Although, interesting thing about that, uh, the new uh, Mario game also officially marks a change in 2D Mario, in that you no longer have collision with the other people you're playing with, which honestly is probably what it should have been from the start. Uh, I, I know that like half of the thing of playing 2D Mario with your family is like, you know, trying to jump on people and throw them off. Uh, but like, I, I mean, let's be real here, guys. Come on, let's get a move on. Uh, best sim slash strategy. So, Advance Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp, City Skylines 2, eh, Company of Heroes 3, Fire Emblem Engage, and Pikmin 4. <sighs> okay, so, with the Advance Wars games, that was such a weird case, because, like, so, they announced that the game was being worked on, and then the wars started happening. So, there's a war in Ukraine, and then suddenly they're like, um... We're not gonna... I, I mean, it'd be a little awkward, so let's let, let's hold this one out for a little bit. So, they held it back, right? But, like, there eventually became this point where it's like, okay, so how long do they need to hold this back before it's not weird anymore? Uh, moreover, and this is a very American view of the thing, but, like, 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 the entire idea of this game is that there's a war. I mean, it's right there in the title. And then, and then they get all scared when, like, an actual war happens. It's like, I, I mean, like, that's the inspiration for these sorts of things, right? Like, people make games featuring wars because wars are interesting, you know? <sighs> Anyways, City Skylines 2 absolutely does not deserve to be here whatsoever. They must have paid Keeley off. That game is not finished. It runs like ass, and it didn't support modding at launch when City Skylines 1 did. It should not be here. Company of Heroes 3 never even heard of it. Fire Emblem Engage... Uh, I, I've, I've kind of lost respect for Fire Emblem games now. Because, like, after Awakening saved the series, the entire rest of the series just became Awakening. Okay, maybe it's a little wrong of me to say that this one in particular is just Awakening. No, it's more like this one is Fire Emblem Heroes, because they, they keep bringing it back all the old characters and was like, hey, remember when these games took themselves seriously and weren't just shipping simulators? <sighs> I remember when Fire Emblem was about war, but now it's about getting married. Um, and Pikmin 4, Pikmin 4 is pretty good. I think I'm going to vote for that there. Like, you guys have no idea how hard it is to be a Pikmin fan. But then again, I did hold that against uh, Alan Wake fans as well, so eh, what do I know? Best sports slash racing. Oh god, who cares? EA Sports FC24, F123, Forza, Forza Motorsport. There's a T in there. Uh, there's no letter T, but like you're supposed to pronounce it like that. Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbocharged and the Crew Motorfest. Genuinely never heard about or care about any of these things. I'm gonna vote for Hot Wheels just to be funny. I'm telling you guys, we're in the awards nobody cares about. Oh, best multiplayer. Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, Party Animals, Street Fighter 6, or Mario Wonder. 
I, I mean, okay, so, like, the fact that they got multiplayer working in Baldur's Gate 3 at all is really cool, and, like, multiplayer is, like, an extremely huge draw of D&D in real life, like, <clears throat> uh, but I don't, I don't know, um... When you're playing it by yourself, like, you're in control of everything, you know? And, like, it can get pretty hard at times. So, like, you, you know how in Gensh, when, like, multiplayer feels like kind of a compromise, because taking away half of your party size really makes your gameplay a lot less interesting, because, like, you're not rotating things anymore? I don't know, is that even the right comparison to make? Um... I feel like it's really gonna come down to Street Fighter 6 or Mario Wonder here, but like the thing is, earlier I mentioned with Mario Wonder, you don't have collision with the other people you're playing with anymore. So, I mean, really, the the multiplayer in that is just going to be like single player, but you're sharing the same screen. But then, like the online multiplayer for it is pretty interesting because they copied the Dark Souls thing, and then with Street Fighter 6, well, obviously fighting games are better to be played with other people. And, like, that's all I really need to say about it. I mean, I know the online for it does actually, like, the lobby system for everything and, like, the free roaming and, like, you know, using your custom character and all. They did do a lot. But, um, mm -hmm, I don't know. I think it's gonna be Street Fighter. So, mm, or do I think it's gonna be all just kids? I'm, I'm gonna vote for Mario because I'm pretty sure it's not going to be that one. Uh, best adaptation. Oh, God. Okay. Blech. Blech. Okay, yeah, it's 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 the Mario movie. There, there's also Castlevania Nocturne, Gran Turismo, The Last of Us, and Twisted Metal, but we all know it's actually the Mario. Most anticipated game, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hades 2, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Star Wars Outlaws, and Tekken 8. Um, okay, I'm I'm really freaking sick of how self-congratulatory Final Fantasy VII is. Like, yes, okay, we get it. It's one of the best RPGs ever made. Cool. But, like, Final Fantasy VII is so full of itself. There are so many fucking Final Fantasy VII spin-offs and, like, parallel universes and, like, it's even got multiple phone games. And, like, it just... Like, I hate the idea of a game with such an ego. Like, okay, cool, we get it. You peaked in the 90s. Can we move on now? <sighs> Hades 2. I mean, everybody loves Hades 1. Um, guys, I... I still want to call it Yakuza. I know it's called Like a Dragon in Japan as well, but like, could they have at least done the regional adaptation of calling it Dragon-like? I think that sounds less weird, um, but I mean, okay, I don't really know much about most of these games in general. I'm gonna say Hades 2, cause like, I mean, Hades 1 was pretty good, right? Oh god, content creator of the year, uh, uh nope, nope, not doing it, don't care anymore. Next, best esports game, uh, don't care. Okay, um, best esports athlete, uh, I don't care. Um, let's see, best esports team, definitely don't care. Although, notice how the FaZe Clan had nothing to do with that. Alright, best esports coach, okay, one, I don't care, but two, seriously, does anyone care? Because, like, you know, there's always some, like, big fat suits that are always like, oh, esports is a growing industry, and they keep saying that every year, because they have a financial incentive to convince people that esports is a growing industry. But, like, if you went around walking around to other gamers asking them who their favorite esports athlete is, or even worse, who their esports favorite coach is, do you think that they actually know any of these people? Because, like, in terms of, like, the idea of games as entertainment for other people, esports is in competition with just, like, friendly old streamers and YouTubers and stuff. Because, like, sure, it can be really interesting to see someone perform at, you know, the absolute peak of what anyone who plays that game is capable of doing, but, like... I mean, there's more to games than just being the best at it. Just like how, like, some people like watching college ball instead of, you know, like, the national whatever equivalent, right? Uh, but anyways, like, 
No, seriously. Literally who, literally who, literally who, literally who, and literally who. Next. So that puts us at, I think we're on 28 now. Uh, best esports event. Oh my god. Uh, 2023 League of Legends World Championship. Blast.tv Paris Major 2023. I've never heard of Blast.tv. Evo 2023. The International Dota 2 Championships 2023. And Valorant Championship 2023. I'm going to vote for Evo here. Uh, because one, it's the one that I've actually heard of. And two, it's about more than one game. All right. Oh, was that all of them? Oh, yeah, okay, that is all of them. Dang. Okay, now there's one more thing we gotta talk about before we can end this video. The Player's Choice Awards. Oh, um, shit, I was too late! <laughs> okay, 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 hold up, all right, so, um, okay, let's talk about this, because I was too late to making this video. So the Player's Choice Awards has been kind of interesting this year. Uh, I'm going to name off all of the games that were a part of it. Um, so there was Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk, uh, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Marvel Spider-Man 2, uh, Resident Evil 4, Alan Wake 2, Genshin Impact, Lies of P, Hi-Fi Rush, Final Fantasy 16, I said 16, I mean it this time, Hogwarts Legacy, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Armored Core 6, One Kai Star Rail, Minecraft, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Street Fighter 6, Starfield, Mortal Kombat 1, No Man's Sky, Octopath Traveler 2, Diablo 4, Fortnite Warframe, Counter-Strike 2, League of Legends, Valorant, GTA Online, Apex Legends, and Destiny 2. There is, there was a lot of games there. Now that was just round one. Only a certain amount of games actually made the cut uh, to round two. Okay, so apparently Player's Voice round two was narrowed down to Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk, Gensh, Hogwarts Legacy, Honkai Star Rail, Liza P, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, and Zelda. Now, again, we all know it's going to be Baldur's Gate 3, so it's about that scramble for second, which I think is... It's, I mean, I don't know, like, it is a pretty stacked lineup. Um, I will say, from my perspective, the thing that I'm a little sad about is, well, okay, let's talk about the Hoyo games being there. So, Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail both competing against each other is a little unfortunate. It's much better for Hoyo fans if they all dogpile their votes on one category, rather than having two categories that cancel each other out. Now, Gensh, I don't think has anything to prove uh, by being here, because it already won last year. And then with Honkai, you know, if Honkai Star Rail won, which I mean, okay, again, it won't because Baldur's Gate 3 will win, but if Honkai Star Rail won, you know that all the Honkai Star Rail players would get extremely fucking annoying about it, and they'd feel the need to, like, rub it in Gensh players' faces every opportunity they get, even though that would just make them even, because it would mean they've both won once. So, I don't know. Um, but again, because the games are so stacked this year, like, I, I mean, again, it's gonna be Baldur's Gate 3, but the second place is gonna be really interesting. I don't remember if they show, like, what the final tally for these things is, but I would love to see it for this. Uh, last year, I think they said, uh, I think they just said it ended up being Gensh, and it was Gensh because they had to get rid of all of the botted votes, which implies it was the Sonic people that were botting and not the Gensh people, which is really funny. Um, and then, of course, there's the element of, like, people think that Hoyo is bribing Gensh players, but actually Gensh's players are bribing Hoyo. But anyways, okay, that's it. That's the Game Awards this year. This was a really long video, and, like, I gotta go sit down and edit this because uh, it's almost 8 o'clock here. And I, I'd like to get this video um, started rendering before I go to sleep so that I can upload it when I'm at the Honkai Food event tomorrow. Tomorrow at the time I'm recording this. So, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I'm not going to do any more coverage on the Game Awards. I, I'm not going to do, like, a, a live-streamed watch-along, because, like, I, I, I like hearing about who won in the end, but, like, I mean, the Game Awards is, like, 80% advertisements, and I really don't care. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm Brancliffe. Goodbye, everyone.